Your glory indeed would demand, most blessed and beloved brethren, that I myself should come to see and to embrace you if the limits of place appointed me did not restrain me, banished as I am for the sake of the confession of the name. So I stop just for a moment to say this, that would seem to indicate that this is written while Cyprian himself is in hiding and banishment away from Carthage um, during that first period of uh, persecution. But in what way I can, I bring myself into your presence. And even though it is not permitted me to come to you in body and in movement, yet in love and in spirit, I come expressing my mind in my letter, in which mind I joyfully exult in those virtues and praises of yours, counting myself a partaker with you, although not in bodily suffering, yet in community of love. Could I be silent and restrain my voice in stillness when I am made aware of so many and such glorious things concerning my dearest friends, things which things with which the divine condescension has honored you, so that part of you have already gone before by the consummation of their martyrdom to receive from their Lord the crown of their deserts? Part still abide in the dungeons of the prison or in the mines and in chains, exhibiting by the very delays of their punishments greater examples for the strengthening and arming of the brethren, advancing by the tediousness of their tortures to the more ample titles of merit, to receive as many payments and heavenly rewards as days are now counted in their punishments. I do not marvel, most brave and blessed brethren, that these things have happened to you in consideration of the desert of your religion and your faith, that the Lord should thus have lifted you to the lofty height of glory by the honor of his glorification, seeing that you have always flourished in his church, guarding the tenor of the faith, keeping firmly the Lord's commands, in simplicity, innocence, in charity, concord, modesty, in humility, diligence in administration, watchfulness in helping those that suffer, mercy in cherishing the poor, constancy in defending the truth, judgment in severity of discipline, and that nothing should be wanting to the example of good deeds in you, even now, in the confession of your voice and the suffering of your body, you provoke the minds of your brethren to divine martyrdom by exhibiting yourselves as leaders of virtue, that while the flock follows its pastors and imitates what it sees to be done by those set over it, it may be crowned with the like merits of obedience by the Lord." But that being first severely beaten with clubs and ill-used, you have begun by sufferings of that kind, the glorious firstlings of your confession, is not a matter to be execrated by us. For a Christian body is not very greatly terrified at clubs, seeing all its hope is in the wood. The servant of Christ acknowledges the sacrament of his salvation, redeemed by wood to life eternal. He is advanced by wood to the crown. But what wonder if, as golden and silver vessels, you have been committed to the mine that is the home of gold and silver, except that now the nature of the mines is changed, and the places which previously had been accustomed to yield gold and silver have begun to receive them. Moreover, they have put fetters on your feet and have bound your blessed limbs and the temples of God with disgraceful change as if the chains, as if the spirit also could be bound with the body, or your gold could be stained by the contact of iron. To men who are dedicated to God and attesting their faith with religious courage, such things are ornaments, not chains. Nor do they bind the feet of the Christian for infamy, but glorify them for a crown. O oh, feet blessedly bound, which are loosed, not by the smith, but by the Lord." O oh, feet blessedly bound, which are guided to paradise in the way of salvation. O oh, feet bound for the present time in the world, that they may be always free with the Lord. O oh, feet lingering for a while among the fetters and crossbars, but to run quickly to Christ on a glorious road. Let cruelty, either envious or malignant, hold you here in its bonds and chains as long as it will. From this earth and from these sufferings, you shall speedily come to the kingdom of heaven. The body is not cherished in the mines with couch and cushions, but it is cherished with the refreshment and solace of Christ. 
The frame wearied with labors lies prostrate on the ground, but it is no penalty to lie down with Christ. Your limbs unbathed are foul and disfigured with filth and dirt, but within they are spiritually cleansed, although without the flesh, although without the flesh is defiled. There the bread is scarce, but man liveth not by bread alone, but by the word of God. Shivering you want clothing, but he who puts on Christ is both abundantly clothed and adorned. The hair of your half-shorn beard seems repulsive, but since Christ is the head of the man, anything whatever must needs become that head which is illustrious on account of Christ's name. All that deformity, detestable and foul to Gentiles, with what splendor shall it be recompensed? This temporal and brief suffering, how shall it be exchanged for the reward of a bright and eternal honor, when, according to the word of the blessed apostle, the Lord shall change the body of our humiliation, that it may be fashioned like to the body of his brightness? But there cannot be felt any loss of either religion or faith, most beloved brethren, in the fact that now there is given no opportunity there to God's priests for offering and celebrating the divine sacrifices, yea, you celebrate and offer a sacrifice to God equally precious and glorious, and that will greatly profit you for the retribution of heavenly rewards, since the sacred scripture speaks, saying, the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a contrite and humbled heart God doth not despise. You offer this sacrifice to God. You celebrate this sacrifice without intermission, day and night, being made victims to God and exhibiting yourselves as holy and unspotted offerings. As the apostle exhorts and says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For this it is, which especially pleases God. It is this wherein your, our works with greater deserts are successful in earning God's good will. This it is, which alone the obedience of our faith and devotion can render to the Lord for his great and saving benefits. As the Holy Spirit de declares and witnesses in the Psalms, what shall I render, says he to the Lord, for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation. And I will call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints." Who would not gladly and readily receive the cup of salvation? Who would not with joy and gladness desire that in which he himself also may render somewhat unto his Lord? Who would not bravely and unfalteringly receive a death precious in the sight of the Lord to please his eyes, who, looking down from above upon us, who are placed in the conflict for his name, approves the willing, assists the struggling, crowns the conquering, with the recompense of patience, goodness, and affection, rewarding in us whatever he himself has bestowed, and honoring what he has accomplished? For that, is, for that it is his doing that we conquer, that we attain by the subduing of the adversary to the palm of the greatest contest. The Lord declares and teaches in his gospel, saying, But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaks in you. And again, settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a month, a, a, should be a mouth and wisdom, which your adversaries shall not be able to resist. In which, indeed, is both the great confidence of believers and the gravest fault of the faithless, that they do not trust him who promises to give his help to those who confess him. And do not, on the other hand, fear him who threatens eternal punishment to those who deny him. All which things, most brave and faithful soldiers of Christ, you have suggested to your brethren, fulfilling in deeds what you previously taught in words, hereafter to be greatest in the kingdom of heaven, as the Lord promises and says, whosoever shall do and teach shall be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Moreover, a manifold portion of the people following your example have confessed alike with you and alike have been crowned, associated with you in the bond of the strongest charity and separated from their prelates neither by the prison nor by the mines, in the number of whom neither are there wanting virgins in whom the hundredfold are added to the fruit of the sixtyfold and whom a double glory has advanced to the heavenly crown. In boys also, I, I courage greater than their age has surpassed their years in the praise of their confession, so that every sex and every age should adorn the blessed flock of your martyrdom. What now must be the vigor, beloved brethren, 
of your victorious consciousness, what the loftiness of your mind, what exaltation and feeling, what triumph in your breast, that every one of you stands near to the promised reward of God, are secure from the judgment of God, walk in the minds with a body captive indeed, but with a heart reigning, that you know Christ is present with you, rejoicing in the endurance of his servants who are ascending by his footsteps and in paths to the eternal kingdoms. You daily expect with joy the saving day of your departure, and already about to withdraw from the world, you are hastening to the rewards of martyrdom and to the divine homes to behold after this darkness of the world the purest light and to receive a glory greater than all sufferings and conflicts, as the apostle witnesses and says, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. And because now your word is more effectual in prayers and supplication is more quick to obtain what is sought for in afflictions, seek more eagerly and ask the divine condescension would consummate the confession of all of us that from this darkness and these snares of the world, God would set us also free with you, sound and glorious, that we who here are united in the bond of charity and peace and have stood together against the wrongs of heretics and the oppressions of the heathens may rejoice together in the heavenly kingdom. I bid you, most blessed and most beloved brethren, ever farewell, far, farewell in the Lord and always and evermore remember me. Well, they wrote back. They wrote back. And it's a brief note, but here's what they wrote back. Gives the names. To their brother Cyprian and Lord, eternal salvation. You speak, dearly beloved Cyprian, in your letters, always with deep meaning as suits the condition of the time. By the assiduous reading of which letters both the wicked are corrected and men of good faith are confirmed. For while you do not cease in your writings to lay bare the hidden mysteries, you thus make us to grow in faith and men from the world to draw near to belief. For by whatever good things you have introduced in your many books, unconsciously you have described yourself to us. For you are greater than all men in discourse, in speech more eloquent, in counsel wiser, in patience more simple, in works more abundant, in abstinence more holy, in obedience more humble, and in good deeds more innocent. And you yourself know, beloved, that our eager wish was that we might see you, our teacher and our lover, attain to the crown of a great confession. For in the proceedings before the proconsul, as a good and true teacher, you first have pronounced that which we, your disciples following you, ought to say before the president. And as a sounding trumpet, you have stirred up God's soldiers, furnished with heavenly arms to the close encounter. And fighting in the first rank, you have slain the devil with a spiritual sword. You have also ordered the troops of the brethren, on the one hand and on the other, with your words, so that snares were on all sides laid for the enemy, and the severed sinews of the very carcass of the public foe were trodden underfoot. Believe us, dearest, that your innocent spirit is not far from the hundredfold reward, seeing that it is feared neither the first onsets of the world, nor shrunk from going into exile, nor hesitated to leave the city, nor dreaded to dwell in the desert place. And since it furnished many with an example of confession, itself first spoke the martyr witness." For it provoked others to acts of martyrdom by its own example, and not only began to be a companion of the martyrs already departing from the world, but also linked in heavenly friendship with those who should be so. Therefore, they who were condemned give us, with us give you before God the greatest thanks, beloved Cyprian, that in your letter you have refreshed their suffering breasts. You have healed their limbs wounded with clubs, have loosened their, fi their feet bound with fetters, have smoothed the hair of their half-shorn head, have illuminated the darkness of the dungeon, have brought down the mountains of the mind to a smooth surface, have even placed flagrant, fragrant flowers in their nostrils, and have shut out the foul odor of the smoke. Moreover, your continued gifts and those of our beloved Quirinius, which you sent to be distributed by Herenius, the subdeacon, and Lucian and Maximus and Amantius, the acolytes, provided a supply of whatever had been wanting for the necessities of their bodies. Let us then be in our prayers helpers of one another. Let us ask, as you have bidden us, that we may have God and Christ and the angels as supporters in all our actions. We bid you, Lord and brother, ever heartily farewell and have us in mind. Greet all who are with you, all ours who are with us love you and greet you and desire to see you.